The Coast Office is a not-for-profit community organisation uh, based in the boat shed uh, at the harbour here in Port Ballantrae. Uh, it was formed as a cooperative society limited. Uh, we have three founding uh, members and they are directors on the board. We have one employee, Paul Blanchard. Uh, his official title is the Coast Officer. Paul is the absolute linchpin of our organisation. Paul is a very experienced waterman. Uh, he has a great way with him and uh, very effectively delivers the ethos of the Coast Office. The purpose of the Coast Office is primarily to encourage and uh, keep alive maritime heritage um, in the village of Port Ballantrae. Um, the three founding partners all had slightly different ambitions. Uh, one was interested in the heritage of this building and preserving this building for use uh, in some form of uh, maritime way. Another of the partners, uh, John, was interested in uh, water activities uh, and myself, uh, Graham Montgomery, I'm particularly interested in building traditional boats and using them on the water. The boat shed here at Port Ballantrae Harbour dates back to the 1880s. Uh, it was built to house the lifeboat, um, the old Coast Guard cottages and Coast Guard station are just up the hill here. Um, behind the harbour. Then in the early 1900s uh, it went it transferred into private ownership and it was actually used as a summer house for a while. Uh, there was a lady and her family lived here uh, in the summer months. After that um, the McNaughtons of Dunderav um, acquired the building and they used it as part of their salmon fishery operation. Then for about the last 30 or 40 years it, uh, the shed lay empty until uh, 2012 when the Coast Office um, became involved and started our current activities in the shed. So the Coast Office has a, a number of functions. Uh, we're very interested in preserving the, the history and importance of this building in the harbour. Uh, we're interested in the maritime heritage of the area and keeping traditional boat building skills alive and other maritime skills. Uh, we're interested in uh, our environment. This is a fantastic piece of coastline. Uh, we want to look after it. We'd like other people to look after it. Um, in so doing, uh, we'd like to understand more about our environment. So we have activities ranging from uh, beach safaris, uh, looking under stones, teaching kids what's under their feet, what's under the water. Uh, snorkel safaris for kids. Uh, we take boat trips in traditional dromphams. Um, we have a series of lectures and talks. And then in the shed itself here, we, we have built two, three traditional boats now um, and done a number of repairs on other boats. So what we're trying to do is explore skills that are dying out quickly, uh, learn them learn those skills uh, and trying to keep those skills in the community. The first project uh, we carried out uh, was generously supported by the Heritage and Lottery Fund uh, and it allowed us to build the Lady Florence which is a replica of a traditional fishing boat called a Dromtham which would have been used in this area. Um, a very good friend of the Coast Office, Dr Rodham, Robin Ruddock, uh, a number of years ago had the foresight to take a fibreglass mould off one of the last remaining dromthams on the north coast. It was a 20 foot, 2 foot dromtham called the Elizabeth uh, in Dunseverick Harbour. Uh, from that mould um, approximately 12 dromthams have been made uh, and as I say we were lucky enough to get funding to make the Lady Florence uh, which we did here in the shed. Uh, we took our time, uh, we were learning on the job um, and about three years ago we uh, had a great day in the community where we launched the Lady Florence. 
The next project then was to build a Curragh. Uh, Curraghs wouldn't have been widely used uh, on this part of the north coast, but they would have been used on Rathlin Island and further west in Donegal. They use a completely different technique. It's, uh, traditionally it would have been sally rods bent, bent over a frame to form the skeleton of the boat and then a cow hide would be stretched over that and then tarred to, to make the boat waterproof. Our project used uh, cedar strip technology where you steam the cedar strip to form the shape of the boat. Very, very new uh, techniques for us. So we enlisted the help of John Wilkinson from Valkyrie Craft. John is an expert uh, in building cedar strip canoes. Um, the same technology applies itself very easily to, uh, to the Kirk project. So that was part of our project um, during lockdown and over the last year where we called it the traditional boat project and six of us taught by John, worked on the project and built the Curragh in stages. So contextually here, I'm, I'm John Wilkinson, I run Valkyrie Craft, which I make uh, traditional boats, artisan type boats, so I've been asked to, to be involved in you guys putting together the building of a traditional bun bed Curragh, which is what this is. These two pieces here are, are gunnel beams and it's important that the, the point at which the ribs go into the gunnel are the same on both sides of the boat. Basically the, the plan today then is we're taking the, the frame of the gunnels and turning into a boat by adding ribs, okay? So the ribs being the cross sections here, these are our ribs. The way that we do it is basically we bend, we bend them using steam uh, or hot water. So to explain the, the way that works is effectively timber is obviously relatively flexible. This is cedar, it's got a fair bit of bend in it, but if we push it too far it's going to snap. So luckily for us, the structure of timber is that there's lignin inside the fibres. If we heat lignin, it allows it to bend, and once it cools, the lignin kind of re reforms. So it's like, it makes it plastic, and like plastic, once it's gone cold again, it goes firm again. So our aim here is to take, take a rib, apply uh, heat to a specific section of the piece of timber, uh, and very carefully and efficiently bend it so uniformly on either side, slot it into these sides, and that will give us a shape. Okay.
Am I going to? Okay, now I can't see that. How does that look to you, Jeff? Does that look like a nice, yeah. beautiful curve? As soon as we start fitting the, stri the stringers on, we everything starts becoming rigid. Okay, so the plan today, tonight, would be to get this missing rib in, and that rib in. Did we? Yeah. Get those two in, hopefully, and then at least get the keel stringer in place because that basically gives us the shape that we're going to work with from then on. If we can bend the other four stringers and fit them tonight and lash them tonight, you'll be well on the way to having, you know, the frame of the boat, boat done. Okay. From there, I'm going back on myself. So over the rib, under the stringer. Trying to keep a bit of tension on there.
The shed here is very much uh, the heart of the coast office. Everything, everything we do um, begins and ends with the shed, whether it be storing sails and oars for the boat, uh, life jackets, fenders, um, all, all of that type of equipment for use on the water. Um, we also store, uh, behind me here, there's timber, which is being seasoned uh, for use on making boats or making oars. Uh, the curragh itself is stored on the loft up here. Uh, the other loft has nets, uh, ropes, there's a range of tools, all sorts of bits and pieces of uh, equipment for boats. We have some display information, there's a display on wartime activity in the village, uh, there's a display of knots, just sort of useful knots, it makes it very easy to teach people how to tie knots. Um, we have a skeleton of a tuna fish, a bluefish tuna, which was washed up on the beach and uh, day by day the parts of the skeleton were collected as the fish had <laughs> decomposed and the skeleton washed up on the beach. Uh, there's numerous shells, uh, lobster skins, uh, and a, a vast collection of shark egg cases uh, which get washed up on the beach. 